In this video, we are going to take what you've already learned about significant figures and apply them to calculations. And in my opinion, this is the most important thing you can do with your knowledge of significant figures. Because when you type numbers into a calculator and those numbers are measurements, the answer your calculator gives you does not take into account the fact that these numbers were measurements. So we're going to learn in this video how to deal with that. Now, there are two rules. One rule is for adding and subtracting, and the other rule is for multiplying and dividing. So if you're adding and subtracting, you should report your answer with the same number of decimal places as the number in your math with the fewest number of decimal places. Sounds like a lot of words, and we're going to go through and explain what this rule really means. So say we're measuring the perimeter of a triangle, and we have one guy who's measuring one side of the triangle, and he has a very precise ruler. His ruler measures out to the nearest hundredth place, so he gets 5.34 centimeters for his side. And the other guy measures other two sides of the triangle, but his ruler isn't as precise. So he gets 3.1 centimeters and 4.2 centimeters. So remember, these are two different rulers with two different amounts of precision, two different incremental levels. So when they're comparing their numbers and they're adding them to get this perimeter, they get 5.34 plus 3.1 plus 4.2 and you type all of that into a calculator, and you think, okay, this is easy, I just add up all these numbers, and you get 12.64. But what you don't realize is that that 12.64 has a very high amount of precision. It's the same amount of precision as that 5.34, but two of the measurements didn't have that amount of precision. So really, what you're doing is you're creating precision out of nowhere. And you're saying that all of the sides were very precise when two of the sides weren't measured as precise. So you can't report this as 12.64 centimeters because two of your measurements didn't go out to the hundredth place. They went out to the tenth place. So your answer should only go out to the tenth place. So you don't create precision out of nowhere. You don't say, okay, well, we know that it's 12.64. We don't know that it's 12.64 because two of those measurements didn't go out to the hundredth place. This has to be rounded to 12.6, the tenth place, because your two of your measurements only go out to the tenth place. Now, if you measured all with the same ruler and you get 3.10 and 4.20 and they're all measured out to the hundredth place, then you can round to the hundredth place when you're adding. So you can report 12.64 centimeters as your perimeter um, of the, as your sum of these three numbers. So when you're adding and subtracting, your answer should be reported with the same number of decimal places as the number with the fewest number of decimal places. Now, what do you do if you're multiplying and dividing? This is where you have to know how to count significant figures. So when you're multiplying and dividing, you need to report your answer with the same number of significant figures as the number with the fewest number of significant figures. So we're going to go through and do a practice problem with this. So say we're measuring uh, the density of this coin, okay? And you remember, hopefully, that density is mass divided by volume. So we have the mass of this coin over the volume of this coin. Now say we measure the mass of this coin and we would put this coin on a balance or this, um, yeah, this piece of metal on a balance and we would measure its mass and say we get for a, ma uh, a mass of 54.1327 grams. So we're using this super precise analytical balance, um, probably was very expensive and it's probably in this separate area of the lab. You open the little door, put it in there and it's this very precise thing. You took all this care to measure the mass of this coin. But when you measure the volume, you just throw it in a, a graduated cylinder and notice the water level rises by about a milliliter. So you're going to say that, uh, or by about seven milliliters, you're going to say that the volume of this coin is seven milliliters. So you didn't take very much care. You did not measure this very precisely. Um, you have one significant figure in your volume measurement. So your mass measurement has very high amounts of precision, but your volume measurement has very low amounts of precision. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six significant digits in our mass measurement and only one significant digit in our volume measurement. 
So when you're rounding your number, you need to round to one significant figure. That makes this 7.77 yada yada 8 grams per milliliter. So when you round this, you should get 8 grams per milliliter. That's it. No decimal places because your answer should never have more precision than any of the numbers that you used to get that answer. Now, exact numbers have their own rules as far as counting significant figures. Um, exact numbers have an infinite number of significant figures because you know that that is an exact amount. So basically when you have an exact number in your calculation, you can just ignore it when you're counting significant figures and move on to the next one. Examples of exact numbers are counting numbers. So for example, this table has four legs. One, two, three, four. I know that it has exactly four legs. So if I need to do any math with that number four, I just assume that it has an infinite number of significant figures because I know exactly that it's four. Also, con some conversion factors are exact numbers. So 2.54 centimeters in one inch. I know that there are exactly 2.54 centimeters in every one inch. Now, some conversion factors aren't exact. Some are approximations, but this one happens to be exact. So if I want to determine how long this table is in inches, um, or in centimeters, and I measure it in inches. And say I measure it as 45.864 inches, and I want to convert that to centimeters. I have my 45.864 inches. I know that every inch contains exactly 2.54 centimeters. So I multiply them, and I get uh, 116.49456 centimeters, but the number that I initially used had five significant digits. So 45.864, that has five significant digits. My conversion factor, my 2.54, has an infinite number of significant digits, so I don't have to even worry about that um, when I'm dealing with how I round this at the end. Um, so I need my answer to have five significant digits, or five significant figures. So I'm gonna round this to 116.49 centimeters. So my answer has the same number of significant digits as the number in my calculations with the fewest number of significant digits, which is five in this situation. So my answer is 116.49 centimeters. So when you're doing this stuff, just remember that when you make calculations that are based off of measurements, those measurements carry a certain amount of precision. And your answer can never have more precision than the numbers, than all of the numbers that were used to make that calculation.